This is the third video where I'm talking about the unit circle. First video was all about radians. Second video was the idea of functions. And this video we're going to talk about finding an angle given a function, which is one of the most common question types. So let's go over what I wanted you to pick up in the first couple. Radian wise, we go from zero on the positive left axis to pi over two, to pi, to three pi over two. We gain basically pi over two radians for every 90 degrees. Pi over two radians is 90 degrees. 180 degrees is pi, 360 is two pi. Second video, x is adjacent, y is opposite every single time. Hypotenuse is always positive. If y is positive, sine is positive. If x is positive, cosine is positive. Sines are the same, tan is positive. Whenever you have this find the angle question, there's a couple of things just to get you started. First, there's always going to be exactly two angles. If you look at my little... Um, very scientific sign graph over here, you see that, that in, in a, a one complete curve between 0 and 2 pi, each sign value shows up exactly two times. Right? It'll always repeat itself. Those will never be in the same quadrant. And by the way, I know I'm using sign as an example, and sign's a problem we have right here. Sorry, I was having trouble with the finger there. But this is same uh, the, the same is true for tan and cosine as well. Always two angles. Okay, so you can punch this in your calculator, find one angle. Great. But then you have to find the second angle, and usually, almost always, uh, there will be multiple angles, multiple answer choices with that one angle that you're able to pull from the calculator. Getting the reference angle is kind of a pain, and there's a lot to remember. But there will only ever be one answer that has the right quadrants, just the right quadrants. So let's look. Uh, negative one half. So negative sine. Sine is negative or y is negative. I'm just going to draw a couple little triangles up here. Not that they're representative, although those kind of are close. And we can go from here. So I'm looking for stuff in the third and the fourth quadrants only. Between pi and 3 pi over 2, and then between 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi. Okay. Pi over 4? No. Right? That First off, that's just automatically out. I don't even need to look at the other one. But 3 pi over 4 is still over here. Th those are both positive. 11 pi over 6? Okay, well, that's that's definitely bigger than 3 pi over 2. Small. Okay, so that's over here. 7 pi over 6? Oh, no. Okay. I can stop looking. I really, really could. But because it's a video, and while you're practicing, you may want to do it this way. I'm going to keep on going. C, uh, pi over 2, obviously going to be positive. 3 pi over 2 is going to be negative, but pi over 2 is going to be positive. 3 pi over 4, well, that's over here. That's positive. 5 pi over 6, these are both in the same quadrant. They're both positive. And pi over 3 and 2 pi over 3, um, again, both positive. So... By marking off, B is the only one that's left. Keep these simple. They don't have to be tough. Remember, find the function or find a function from the function. Find the side. Almost guarantee you'll see a unit circle. The fourth is a bit of a wild card. So, in general, four trig problems. They're good points to get. Be comfortable with them. You don't need that much trig knowledge. You don't have to be that good at trig. There's a lot of strategy on these. 